I believe testing people in semiconductor field are great in terms of their excellent contribution. I'm not just talking about people in my company, Semix, but I'm mentioning all the people in testing field, including tester people, handler people, promo card guys, who work as customers or suppliers, or even our competitors in my area. Why I appreciate ourselves so much? I believe our contribution are not less than the people in front end. Our contribution is even bigger. First of all, we testing people's greatest contribution is in the reliability. I believe IC reliability comes largely from our contribution. Of course, I acknowledge the improvement from front end and these design people to give higher reliability to each transistor. However, from production point of view, making all the micro components in the integrated circuits perfect is never a possible job. Without completely discarding bad devices, reliability is never achieved. I believe reliability of a semiconductor is simply all about the reliability of testing. This is our solemn duty. And this is why the world is a better place, because we testing people exist. What if the semiconductor circuits go mad? But nobody worry about the reliability at this moment. Actually, this is a great innovation compared with the past situation. This kind of innovation is what we testing people have made. In order to achieve a reliable sorting, there have been great commitment, sweat, endeavor from great testing engineers. For an example, in probe field, we probe engineers delicately control the context by very careful setting of overdrive values. We carefully consider thermal and other effects to adjust the planarity and other mechanical conditions to make sure a better contact. We lovely make contacts between wafers and proper cars. We carefully determine speed and acceleration profile. Important testing conditions such as chuck temperature, for example, is accurately controlled by finding the optimum values measured and applied again and again, constantly and endlessly. We call their procedure of testing as recipe, the term a chef in a fine restaurant uses. I think they raise their recipe to the highest level of art. This is an art. Our customers are leading the art, and we machine makers exist to support machines and services for their fine art. Now, let's move to see another big contribution. We should test 20,000 times of memory cells compared with the situation of two decades ago. However, the speed of individual transistor is increased by only 20 times. For your easy understanding, today we need to read 20,000 times more amount of memory with the speed only 20 times faster than in 1997. Looks like impossible, but we have done it. Our clever test engineer have done it by increasing parallelism. In 1997, we usually test 16 devices on a wafer at the same time. But very soon, we start to test 32 chips at each shot. And soon again, we go to 64 parallel. Again and again, we double the parallelism, and now finally, we are able to test the whole devices on a wafer at the same time. This is one-shot testing. Nobody, including people in test area, expected that fast advancement of parallelism before. Long time ago, one of my high-level testing engineers once told me, in the future, 10 times more probas will be needed. Oh, I surprised. That's why I started proba business. But that never happened. 
the number of probas were not increased, but just parallelism increased. However, we confronted the problem. What is next to the one-shot probing? This may be the limit of parallelism. But again, some great testing engineers made an idea to save the planet. This is the group testing concept. Instead of increasing parallelism for each shot, they proposed to increase the density of contact machines. Their target is to maximize the number of contact machines and testers for a given space. That way, they want to save the space cost and also they expect the whole machines also become cheaper. Their group testing concept is like this. Firstly, they gather as many probe and tester sets as possible and remove each load and cassette docking part and integrate them together so that the common loader and the docking parts are arranged in the front. And they arrange the probing assemblies side by side without no space between them, and also they stack them into multiple layers. They call the each probing assembly as cell probing unit. And finally, those multiple cell probing units are arranged and stacked like this picture to make some three-store prober apartment with loaders and docking parts in common. However, even if we shrunk all the space between cell probing unit, it might not be enough. The size of each cell probing unit also need to be much smaller. However, it is not easy. If we had been able to reduce the size of proba easily, it would have happened a long time ago it could not become smaller in normal ways. So those clever test guys figured out a new idea again. Instead of mechanically moving the chalk to make contact between the probe card and the wafer on the chalk, they proposed vacuum contact, meaning the loader brings the wafers beneath the specially designed probe card assays. And then by using vacuum force, the card assay suck the wafer to make the contact with the probe card. However, for me, I don't buy this concept. I see one thing is surely missing in it. This concept reminds me of eating hamburgers on the street to where those delicate recipes go. Can we endure fixed overdrive and planarity? Can we just make a simple contact instead of delicate adjustment to ensure a lovely touch? Can we accept the testing temperature controlled without chuck? For a long time, we have believed the chuck exists for keeping testing temperature accurately, which is the highest important requirement of testing. Above all, is the recipe we valued as a fine art, finally proved just as an actually useless myth. My belief? I should agree, you can surely eat hamburgers on the street. And you might allow all those instant probing concepts the way you make hamburgers. However, if you do like this, some inevitable overkilling during the test can happen. If you do not go with a very delicate probing control like the chef in a fine restaurant do, you should take out any device suspected, even though it is good enough actually. But the overkilling means yield drop. We all know we can cover the whole testing cost if we just increase testing yield by only 1%. So, not losing any yield drop should be our omnibus testing objective. This is why that concept reminds me of eating hamburgers on the street. In this regard, I believe our good legacy of trying to make the best recipes should be preserved also in the future. 
I mean, we should never stop the quest of searching excellent recipes now and forever. But the question is, can we make a small enough cell probing unit having just the same function with a normal individual prober? The answer was no until not long time ago. The technology had not been supported. This is why those hamburger group testing machines have appeared in the testing world. But very good for semiconductor industry and also for my belief. My top genius engineer who joined not long ago, this guy, once explained his plan to develop a small enough cell probing unit which acts just the same way of individual normal probers. In his draft plan, his chalk and stage assay has the height of only 270 millimeter. When I first hear his idea, I strongly suspected the machine could not come to reality. I said this concept cannot satisfy the accuracy and rigidity requirement for high-end memory tests in the future. Even I told him my own story, that I already tried something with a similar motivation 10 years ago, but I failed. But he never accepted my idea. I knew he was an innovative guy, but I thought it was impossible. However, he was also very, very persistent. One day, he asked me to come to his place with desperate voice. I went there and she showed me something. I was really surprised. He proved all my concerns were wrong. The only words that can describe his work are simple perfection, which is the core value of Semix. He explained his design has six degrees of freedom movement with enough stroke to realize perfect contact recipes. I also found his group testing concept can provide space for testers larger than any other group testing probers in the world because his machine is so basically compact. Even higher shock hit my head when I see normal big chalk systems also can be inserted, even in his ultimate compact design. I could say nothing for a while. Finally, I opened the mouth and said, you have done it. We'll succeed in making ultimate group testing proper with your concept eventually. I would call your group testing concept as Chef Proba. This is my final message. You can eat hamburgers on the street, but never forget your chef with fine art recipe who understands your taste. Thank you very much.